video is going to be very simple. Basically, we're looking at the Agisa updates for AMD BIOS and whether on our Gigabyte X570 Master Motherboard it mattered to go from F5C to N11, which was the BIOS that initially shipped on the boards. We tested with F5C, spent some discussion online if you missed it, where some reviewers are seeing something we already knew about, but it wasn't affecting us really, uh, where they're seeing lower frequencies than advertised boost, and we need to talk about that briefly too. But um, the end result depends CPU to CPU and board to board, and fortunately for us, we were basically unaffected. But we're going to go through the test data anyway be between the two different BIOSes because you all keep hammering my inbox and comment sections about it, and I am exhausted and actually ready to die at this point. But we're going to do it anyway. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus Toolkit on store.gamersnexus.net. Our brand new toolkit just launched and contains 10 custom-made drivers for video card disassembly, repasting, and teardowns. The eight core tools are made of high-quality chromium vanadium alloy steel that's built for lawn service life and resistance to wear during use. The other two tools are carbon steel hex heads that were custom ground down for capacitor clearance on video cards. All the tools are easily mounted to a pegboard or stored in the GN made tool bag for easy transport. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so housekeeping stuff. I gave the whole team off today. I was also supposed to have off. Uh, I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining, but I, I do want, just think of a time when you worked uh, 168 hours in a week. Think of a time when you worked like 120 to 30 of those and remember the feeling at the end of it where you you actually aren't sure if you're going to live anymore. <laughs> so that's where we are. I just want to set that stage. So the point is, for the charts today, I am not doing anything fancy. I'm going to put a PNG on the screen and I'm going to say the numbers and then that will be the video. So to catch everyone up, basically, uh, there is an, a, an issue on some CPUs and some motherboards especially where the, and when I say some CPUs, I don't mean 3600 versus 3900X, I mean literally CPU to CPU, there's variance within the same SKU. So uh, the issue is that it's not always boosting to the advertised boost clock under the single threaded workloads. And all core workloads, totally unaffected for us anyway. I can't speak, I guess, for all of the samples, but from what we've seen, all core 100% unaffected, the results for all core 100% unaffected. The results for single core theoretically can vary a bit, and we'll go through some of that today, but it depends. And so what we were, we published frequency data in our initial reviews. A lot of people, I guess, I didn't blow it up and make a big story out of it, so I guess no one really noticed, but we were seeing on average about 25 megahertz below uh, advertised in some of the tests, but for the most part it was okay. Um, okay enough that it would be within variance for the most part. And that's what we're going to look at today. So what we did, very briefly here to explain it, is X570 Master for the motherboard. It's by Gigabyte. I am extremely happy that we chose to test with Gigabyte this time because uh, from what we've heard about some of the other motherboards, Gigabyte has been the most on the money with the spec, which is good because redoing everything would suck. So uh, fortunately, we're not too affected, but basically there's a few different versions of BIOS. There's N11, that's what the what AMD officially uh, validated with the CPUs. And then there's FC5, I think it's called, which is what came out just before release. There was an F, uh, F, F5C, I think. There was an F5D, and then now there's an F5E. Those are Gigabyte's BIOSes. Uh, MSI has had some BIOS changes as well, but at the end of the day, what it really comes down to, aside from some memory tweaks that aren't really relevant here. It's overclocking stuff. Aside from those, what it comes down to is AMD's binary code that they give to the motherboard makers, and it's called uh, AGESA and A-G-E-S-A. -E uh, there's version 1002 that was on the, or 1002, was on the N11 Press initial BIOS. We did not use that BIOS for uh, the motherboards. And then there was 1003A. 1003A is what we used. It's on FC5, F5C, sorry. And that includes the, uh, some of the fixes for clock boosting. So we had those and we were, we were uh, well, we were supposed to have those and I'll talk about that a bit more too. Um, and then there's uh, another version, 1003AB, AGISA, and that includes the initial patch and then a follow-up patch. So those are the AGISA versions. That's what dictates the boosting behavior and uh, for the most part, it depends on the CPU, literally CPU to CPU, where you'll see some that just don't do 4600 for 3900X. They might do 4575 or 4550. Um, we can't get a clear answer from AMD on if that's normal, which is incredibly frustrating. Uh, but I had a call with AMD before we went live with our 
before we wrote the review and said, hey, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing this clock behavior, 4575 is kind of the max single thread we see, and we're seeing a uh, single or multi-core at whatever it was, don't remember at this off the top of my head, but we were seeing multi-core, told them that number. I said, what is the all core frequency? And they're like, well, we don't, we don't have that. I was like, yes, you do. There's an all core frequency. You might not call it that anymore, but it still exists. So the way it works, it's, it's like partly thermal dependent, power dependent. And if you don't have the thermal limitation, which we don't in a test environment, you don't have really a power limitation, there is going to be an all core. And the only reason it might be dictated differently at that point would be silicon quality, which is a different discussion entirely. Anyway, we found the all core and the single core numbers ourselves. Thank you very much, Andy. And those are in the reviews for the 3600 and 3900X. So we did find those. We published them. You're good to go on that. Um, anyway, I guess I think we can just talk about the numbers here. Uh, let's, I don't know, let's, let's just go through the numbers. I'll put some PNGs on the screen and then we'll, um, uh, if I think of anything else, we'll go over it. And then I'm going to go outside before I don't have a chance anymore. So uh, Cinebench, for the first test to help demonstrate the differences. And if they emerge as Cinebench, we have to do real world testing as well, of course. But this helps establish expectations. With the R5 3600 CPU, the results aren't just close. They're identical. This chart only looks at the maximum single core clock per polling interval. Remember that the fastest core will change from one to the next. So we take the maximum value out of all the cores and plot that as it is a single threaded workload. The maximum frequency is 4200 megahertz in all tests. Technically, it's measuring 4200.4, but basically 4200. BCLK or base clock is 100 before anyone asks about that. Uh, the R5 3600 official spec, as a reminder, is 4200 megahertz. Our R5 3600 results are 100% unaffected by this BIOS. There is zero difference and the results will not change. We tested on F5C, but N11 would also have been fine here. F5C also has 1003A AGISA, N11 has 1002, and the 1003AB can be found on the F5E version with patches of more of the same for 1003A, except for some of the other affected um, units, not even SKUs. For the R9-3900X, we're seeing more of a difference than the 3600, but still not much of one. The single-threaded difference in Cinebench is between 0 MHz and 75 MHz max, and not frequently. The average delta calculated across the entire run is 49.6 MHz. As for if this impacts results, the answer is that it depends, but mostly no. Remember that not many of the tests we run these days, even games, will entirely load one thread. And we don't do one thread Cinebench numbers either, so that doesn't matter here uh, also. Even most games will push out at least two core workloads these days, and so these are unaffected in our testing. We can look at some real data for validation. We'll skip the 3600 since we've already validated it as good data. There's no point in redoing all that work. And so that remains entirely 100% unaffected. There is zero impact on the 3600 review, which is great because we said it's a good processor, uh, so that's good. I, I'm glad that... <laughs> But I don't have to change that opinion, although it would only go up in theory based on what people have been complaining about. So there is no magical 10% performance increase to our 3600 review. For those of you who wanted there to be one, I'm sorry, but just be happy with the fact that the 3600 is a damn good CPU and we were very confident in making a strong recommendation for it in our video. So uh, you don't need to stuff this magical plus 10% number into our charts. Uh, and mislead people because I've seen a lot of that on Reddit and it's incredibly frustrating because like the CPU already does well, you don't have to make things up. Um, there is an issue with boosting for some processors, but it's not for all of them. So don't just assume every review is going to have a magical plus 10% number here. Uh, all right, so I think we need to talk about some other stuff. V-Ray, with V-Ray, the 3900X stock CPU, produces the same 0.75 minute result as in our original test. Uh, that's with N11, F5E, and F5C. We used F5C for testing, which has a GSA 1003AB, and, or A, sorry, and F5E has 1003AB. N11 is what AMD sent on the board, but we updated to the FC version for better support uh, elsewhere. There's no difference in this test. This is an all core test. so. Everything else that's all core, which is all, all of the production tasks we did basically, I think, I think yes. There might be one I'm not, pretty sure it's all of them are unaffected there for uh, all core. 
Let's look at another one that is frequency and uh, not a frequency dependent, not as thread heavy. GTA 5 1080p. GTA, as a reminder, is more single threaded than every other game in our benchmark for the most part. So differences would emerge here. For this one, our original review data published a 109.9 FPS average for the R9 3900X. The N11 pre release review BIOS with a GSA 1002 hit 112. And our data range here, run to run, is 112.4 to 113.3 average. This is tested across five test passes. Standard deviation is roughly 0.4 FPS uh, for deviation on the average. The maximum difference is a 2.7% improvement, not the 10% improvement that uh, people online have been speculating. That is, again, not to say it won't happen on some reviews, but it does not affect our review here. There's a maximum improvement of 2.7%, and that's with the run-to-run -run variation, which would drag that down depending on uh, which number you calculate against. So this is important to go back and note. Of course, the improvement is noteworthy, and I'm uh, happy to point it out briefly, but this does not change the review. Quick aside here, too. A lot of people are now confused as what boost even means. When AMD says 4.6 gigahertz boost, they don't mean all core. It has never meant that. That's not what Intel means either. So that's not the problem. This is an entirely different thing. Uh, all core is always going to be a lower number to maintain stability. And the boost spec listed on the website has never been, for the last several generations, the all core boost, especially for Ryzen. So that's a different issue. Also, my audio, my recorder is about to die, but we're just going to switch to the on camera audio. I'm not dealing with this today. <laughs> All the recommendations in the review for the 3900X remain the same. The 3600 remains strongly recommended for us. The 3900X remains recommended in the applications we recommended it for. I'm not redoing the review here. You can go watch that if you want to know what those were. And uh, and then I guess that's, that's up to GTA so far. So review itself, unaffected data affected maximally by 2.7% in GTA 5. And 0% in V-Ray and every other all-core workload. Let's look at the last two, Tomb Raider. Plotted a difference of 1.6 FPS average max, which is more or less error margin. It is a repeatable result though, so we'll mention it as repeatable, which means that it is probably a real difference. The end improvement is maybe 1%, 1.1%, which is within reasonable error for most testing, uh, but ours is a bit tighter than that, so that is outside of our error margins just barely. This does not change anything in the review once again, but it does update the numbers which are marginally higher. Total War 2 is battle benchmark. Plotted a 162 FPS average originally, and is now at 159.2 FPS average. That's a 1.7% maximum improvement, but this game has a much wider run-to-run -run variance than others. Note that the 0.1% lows, for instance, range by 9 FPS here, which is within the wider error margins for 0.1% lows in this game. The average FPS difference is outside of error margins, so it is a real difference. We have an allowance of plus or minus 0.8 FPS average in this one, uh, so 1.7% max here. Anyway, the point is, uh, I suppose, that there can be a bit of an improvement, but not always. And there's not much of one in our testing. That's not to say, again, some reviews will be way more effective. So Anantech, we saw the whatever initial data they put up, and it looks like they'll have a much bigger difference than we did. Um, but that depends on the CPU and on the BIOS. And we used a different motherboard, and we obviously have a different CPU. So just to kind of close this out, I've been knocking the the comment frenzy through this a bit because I am annoyed to be frank uh, about the, you need to retest everything, it's 10% better. That's not true with our testing. So you can stop those comments now, It's it's we got it, uh, but it's not true here. So the, the end result then is some reviewers will see a bigger difference than we did, but we're not going to see a big difference in our data, which means our reviews are more or less unaffected. If you wanna be optimistic, you can maybe average the differences here and call it a maximum average improvement of 2% in games that are more thread limited. So that would be the optimistic look at it, but um, that doesn't really change a whole lot. You're talking single digit FPS changes here. And to, to go over this again, like I was saying, some outlets will see a bigger difference like Anantech, uh, as mentioned, but I do want to be very clear here that for those people who are more affected, for the reviewers who are more affected than we were, I'm obviously very happy we're not that affected because we've done enough uh, for now. But for those who are more affected, please don't go like brigade their channels or their review websites because this is not a fault of the reviewers. This is an AMD crammed a bunch of products down everyone's throats and gave them six days, launched a product on a Sunday. So even getting contact from AMD was difficult. 
and uh, also a holiday weekend in the US. So getting contact with AMD and the motherboard manufacturers was difficult. Um, so this is not a fault of the reviewers for those who do see a bigger difference. Don't go brigade them. Uh, it is purely a matter of the BIOS revisions, the AGISA code changes, and the individual SKUs of CPUs and Gigabyte uh, via an outlet had released some information on their own internal testing, where on the same BIOS with the same SKU, so 3600, I, I think I, well, Leo. So the same SKU, 3600, same BIOS, they were seeing different single core frequencies, uh, one to the next. And so how are you, what are you supposed to do about that? Like, how do you account for that? Um, so anyway, that's the story. Our results you can look at with confidence that they are fine. And if you would like to be optimistic on the gaming stuff, add 2%. Uh, our 3700X review, I'm not going to go back and change. That will be published as is, uh, because again, the difference isn't big enough and it's, it's not worth redoing days of work at this point um, because we are totally knackered. So uh, this is, you know, this, this is a different discussion entirely on how to treat your media partners and your motherboard partners. But anyway, end all of the story is our data, uh, all core, fine, and then limited core workloads, maximum 2% improvement, except for that one, uh, what was it, GTA maybe, 2.7%, wherever that was, 2.7% in GTA 5, um, but the max average was 2%. So uh, I think I've said everything I need to say, and I would like to go outside now because I haven't done that in a while. So thank you for watching. I will see you all next time. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net to pick up a shirt, a mod mat, or a toolkit if you'd like to support us directly. And, uh, and you can also go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. I'll see you all next time.